The story of surgical correction of angular tuberculous kyphosis started with the development and application of an operation which is now widely known as the Hong Kong operation. In the 1950s, Professor Arthur R. Hodgson was recruited to the Department of Surgery, University of Hong Kong, to strengthen the treatment of orthopedic problems. One of the most common conditions at that time was tuberculosis of the spine. He popularized the use of the anterior surgical approach to excise the disease area and stabilize it with an anterior spinal fusion. In slides one and two, you can see the second of the first hundred cases thus treated. In this patient, the autograph used was rib grafts. In fact, it was a failure because the graft fractured quickly and the deceased area went on to non-union. Subsequently, either iliac crest grafts or fibular grafts were used the latter when the patient was a young child. Independent clinical trials performed by the Medical Research Council, MRC, of Britain have concluded that patients treated with anti-tuberculous drugs plus anterior spinal fusion had a much improved result in preventing formation of kyphosis or improvement of kyphosis compared with patients treated with drugs only. Nevertheless, there remains a cohort of patients who have been treated with anti-tuberculous drugs alone or without treatment, gradually developing an increasing angular kyphosis, seen in slides 3 and 4. When the kyphosis increases in severity, the related problems include an ugly cosmetic deformity in slides 5 and 6, compromise of cardiopulmonary function, and in some cases, spontaneous compression of the spinal cord leading to paralysis or paraparesis in slides 7 and 8, which includes an MRI scan. The lesion is obvious, and the treatment in those days was very difficult. Slide 9 shows two possible ways of correcting a kyphosis. In the top half is correction by a closing posterior osteotomy. In the lower half is an opening anterior osteotomy. Posterior closing osteotomy is efficient and relatively simple in round kyphosis. It does not work in angular kyphosis. In the 1970s and 80s, at the Department of Orthopedic Surgery, University of Hong Kong, the idea to correct tuberculous angular kyphosis with an opening anterior osteotomy was contemplated. The anterior components constituting the internal kyphus must be excised before opening up of the kyphotic deformity was possible, and also to avoid damage to the spinal cord by anterior compression of the internal kyphus during correction. In many cases, the posterior elements also had spontaneously fused. This posterior fusion had therefore also to be excised before attempting correction, otherwise the kyphosis would not budge. After the anterior and posterior removal, the spine would become very unstable. Therefore, an implant or apparatus had to be designed to stabilize the spine at this stage. An internal stabilizing device was obviously difficult, if not impossible, because of the restricted space. The concept of an external stabilizing device was then considered and adopted. This consisted of a halo pelvic apparatus. The proximal fixation point was the skull, and the distal fixation points were the two iliac crests. The proximal and distal fixation points were connected by uprights. In the initial development, as can be seen in slide 10, the apparatus was initially designed to be applied with the patient lying down. 
Whilst this was possible, the fact that the correction of the kyphosis could only be done extremely slowly over a period of several months made it impossible for the patient to be in a prone or supine posture for that period of time. After much refinement, the definitive version was made and can be applied with the patient ambulant, seen in slide 11. The correction of the kyphosis was achieved by gradual distraction of the proximal and distal fixation points. This was done with the patient awake so that any neurological complications can be alerted and avoided. The later version of the apparatus also incorporated strain gauges to measure the viscoelasticity changes of the spinal column during the lengthy period of correction by distraction. Slides 12 and 13 show the pre- and post-op photographs of a girl so treated. Slide 14 shows a group of successful patients treated by our method during the treatment period, all ambulant and going about their normal daily life. Slide 15 is a paper published by the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery, American volume, in 1974, reporting on the first batch of such patients treated. The number of and the sequence of the required five major operations are seen in slide 16. Complications of the cervical spine can develop due to the big amount of force required and the lengthy immobilization during the correction period, as well as damage to the spinal cord, seen in slide 17. These have been recorded in the first paper as mentioned above. The incidence of such complications has continued to decrease with further experience. At present, in 2015, although different types of posterior, one or multi-staged osteotomies have been described and reported in the literature, when faced with a severe rigid angular kyphosis in which the upper and lower limbs are in marked lordosis, seen in slide 18, and the internal kyphus of such magnitude, the anterior opening osteotomy combined with posterior removal of fused elements followed by gradual correction under the stabilization of the halopelvic apparatus remains the best option for the patient. The apparatus can also be used as a simple external fixator, even in old people. Slide 19 shows its use in a 50-year-old with TB spine in late teens treated with anti-TB drugs. In slide 20, the TB was cured, but he gradually developed a severe angular kyphosis with progressive lower limb neurology and bladder and bowel incontinence. In slide 21, in order to decompress the spinal cord by removing the internal kyphus and avoiding destabilizing the spine, the apparatus was used. Slide 22 shows the internal kyphus. The use of the apparatus enabled safe excision of the internal kyphus, shown in slides 23 and 24. Thank you.